Hi, in this video you will learn how to create custom morphs for Daz 3D in Blender. Then after you've created and imported those morphs, how to import them into your shaping menu so they can be used on any character at any time, but you only have to set them up once. And if you would, please beat the like and subscribe button with a vicious brutality until they run off and tell the algorithm what you did. The first thing to do is to choose your Genesis character that you want to use. I'm using a Gen 8 female just because Gen 8s have more detail and then the final product just looks better. Now I need to briefly explain how these morphs actually work to prevent really serious confusion. When you load a Genesis character and change absolutely nothing, Daz is going to consider every single polygon on that character to be at position zero. So whatever you change, whatever you move past this point is going to be given a numerical value. And the difference between that numerical value and zero, Daz is going to consider your morph. This is the mindset you just need to have to simplify things so that when you set up your character, things go properly. And setting up your character is where the vast majority of problems happen. If you set up your character wrong somehow, then this will happen. Kill it! Kill it with fire! <sighs> oh god, that was awful. Let's just uh, delete that character and set up a new one. Also, because I didn't save anything here, that monstrosity is completely cleared from Daz, and I don't have to think about it or look at it ever again. So to prevent all those problems, you need to set up your character properly. First thing to do, and this is one of the easiest things in the world to forget, is to deactivate the eyelashes. This is more of a Genesis 8 problem, but for some reason, eyelashes just do not transfer well from Daz to Blender and back again. So to make your life infinitely easier, make sure those eyelashes are deactivated. Second thing to do is to come to your Parameters tab, come down here to General, then Mesh Resolution. Daz, as a default, has it at high resolution, and for this, you need to go to Base Resolution. So now, with the character highlighted, go up here to File, Export. I'm going to call this Gen 8 F blank, give it a number 3, because I've done this before. Push Enter. Now, you need to have these exact same settings. Go to Daz Studio on this top option here. Make sure your scale is at 1%. Now I'm going to switch over to Blender. Got a perfectly blank thing set up here. I'm going to get rid of this cube. Go to File, Import, OBJ, Wavefront OBJ. Now I'm going to find my file. Make sure to click on the OBJ file and not the MLT, uh, MTL file, because when Daz exports, it gives both, but only the OBJ file is actually useful. So one of the many things that can really screw up a character from here on out, click on here on Geometry, and make sure you are in Keep Vert Order and click on Polygon Group. Go to Import. And my character imported just fine. So now that I got my screen all nice in position here, got my gen character in installed, gonna go up here to sculpt mode, the upper left hand corner. And just to keep things simple, I'm gonna use the easiest of tools, which is draw and smooth. So I'm gonna keep this more pretty simple. I'm just going to inflate the lips here to give kind of a pouty look. Your morph can be as simple or as complicated as you want, but because this is just a teaching tool, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go to the X right up here. That makes sure that everything that I do on the right side is going to be mirrored on the left side, and I just need a nice symmetrical look. That 
actually came out pretty good. Maybe a little bit more on the bottom here. Yeah, this looks a little extreme with the pouty lips, but uh, at this stage, this is 100% of what you're going to get in Daz. Also, the transfer tends to mute the uh, morph a tiny bit, so it won't look quite this extreme when I once I put it back into Daz. So now that I'm actually pretty satisfied with what I've done, go up here to File, Export, Wave Format OBJ. Put it in a file where you can easily find it. Give it a name. I'm going with lips full slash thin. Now make sure that your settings are identical to mine. Set the scale to 100 because you brought it down to 1% before. This will bring it back up to 100% when you put it back in DAS. Under grouping, objects, and vertex, also make sure to click object selected only. That'll prevent any kind of confusion. Then go to export, go back into DAS, and again, you can keep both these programs open at this point. Now that you're back in DAS, go to Edit, Figure, Morph Loader Pro. Your settings should be the same. Go to Choose Morph. I should go to my Parameters, Morphs, under General. And I have Thin Lips, Full, and Thin. And it should, looks pretty good actually. It doesn't look good at 100% negative, but what I'll do is I'll just keep playing with it until it looks okay. Looks like, it's like negative 40, negative 45. Yeah, negative 45 looks okay. So the next step is go to up here to my little gear here, that's your settings tab. Go to Parameter Settings. Now I'm going to put a little slash here for my name because when you go to save these files, it doesn't like you to put in punctuation like this. But for the morph label, it makes it much more descriptive. The next thing to do is to tell the morph where you want it placed. Now this is a face morph, so it's going to go under Actor, Head, Face, mouth, real world. And I like to give uh, my custom morphs a custom or a custom color. So I'm going to red and it's going to fade into pink just because it's lips. And I'm going to say it's going to be go down to a minimum of a negative 50 and then push accept and it vanished from the morphs because it's now in the shaping tab. And I go to face, mouth, and there it is. It's now in my shaping tab. It's a little, yeah, that was pretty extreme. But, you know, that's 100%. I can bring it down a bit. Actually, looks pretty good. So the next thing to do is actually to save it, take it back up to 100%, go to File, Save As, well the way down to Support Asset, Morph Asset, and I'm going to change it to your vendor name, in this case Tomasi Studios. Product name is going to be lips full. And then I come here to Genesis 8 and make sure all of these are not clicked. Genesis 8, actor, head, face, mouth, real world, 
and there's the morph right there. Obviously your morph will be in a different place than mine, but what's important is it's the same from your shaping settings to your save settings. In this case, they add up, click accept, now, to make, if everything went right, I can delete this character, bring in a new one. Click on mouth. And there is my morph in all its weird glory. And obviously I've done a few of these. That's one reason I love doing morphs like this where you only change a handful of things. And that's how you do this. Hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, comments, or straight up abuse, hey, that's what the comments section is for. If you want to help me out, again, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And thanks for watching.